Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're all doing well. Well, it's been a while since I've made a statement necklace and I know many of you love that kind of style and so do I. And since it's springtime here in the United States, what better time to make a statement necklace that is floral themed. As you can see, this gorgeous necklace features some pretty check flower beads. It has a larger focal bead in the center and some smaller green ones to complement the larger one as well as add color. Not only that, the necklace also features some beautiful Art Deco cut rhodonite beads and all of these beads came in Sam's Bead Box for the month of April. Now, if you're not familiar with Sam's Speed Box, I'll leave some information down below in the description section of this video, along with a coupon code and a link to the website in case you're interested. And if you missed out on this box, you can always go to the website to see if they have any extras from the box. Sometimes they do offer them. I'm also going to leave a list of all the materials down below, as well as a list of the tools that I'll be using for today's project. And don't forget that I always model my jewelry pieces at the end of my videos, so please stick around for that. And I'm anxious to jump into this tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. And here we have Sam's Speed Box for the month of April 2024. The name of this box is Chateau in Bloom. And I did do an unboxing video. If you missed out on seeing it, I'll link it down below. But anyway, this was a spectacular box. It really was. I was so impressed when I opened it. It was full of very romantic colors in very soft tones. And it had some very unique beads as well. But when I saw that gorgeous rectangular focal bead, I was immediately inspired to make a statement necklace. But all of the beads were beautiful and I had a difficult time deciding what to make. The box definitely transported me to the Loire Valley of France and I envisioned myself walking through the garden looking at all the gorgeous roses and flowers and I knew I had to make a Renaissance style necklace. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you the beads and the materials we'll be using. Here are the beads we're going to be using. Let me go over them with you. I have some 6mm sized Rhodonite beads. They have an Art Deco cut which makes them unique and here I have the beautiful focal bead. It has a flower design as you can see. It's called a rectangle flower bead and it's checked glass. And it has an antique stone Picasso finish. It measures 14 by 20 millimeters. And here I have some Czech glass lily beads. They measure 8.5 millimeters. And the color is rustic gold. And here I have some Czech glass flower beads. They're actually camellia beads. And the color is peridot with gold wash. And they measure 14 millimeters across. Now in addition to these beads, we're also going to be using some seed beads. And these are size 6O, the Miyuki's. And let me see the color. The color is Picasso brown tan and they're matte but we're only going to use a couple of them. Let me show you what else we'll be using today. Here are some additional items. These are from my own stash. I have some craft wire here and it's 20 gauge and the color is antique brass, but you can use gold if you want to. Here I have an extended chain. It's in an antique bronze color and it measures about two inches. I also have some ball head pins. They're also in an antique bronze color. Actually, all of these items are. They're pretty long, but we're going to be using them to create some dangles and I'll be doing wrap loops for those. And here I have some four millimeter size jump rings and a lobster clasp as well. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna work on the bottom part of the necklace first. And these are the beads we're gonna be using. I have 14 of the Rhodonite beads, five of the Camellia beads, six of the Lily beads, two size 60 seed beads and the focal bead and some ball head pins. I've also cut myself a piece of 20 gauge wire. So the first thing we'll do is mount all of these on wire and then we'll assemble everything. Now, many of you are very interested in my process and how I come up with things. It's actually pretty involved because I usually end up coming up with different designs and changing it up quite a bit. But one of the things that I always do is to create a prototype. And that's what I did with today's design. Let me just show you. I filmed a little clip when I built it. Now, here's the prototype I created. I used aluminum wire. Here it is. And it's in a copper color. But when I do prototypes, I really don't care what color it is. I like to use aluminum wire because it's soft and it allows me to create components very effortlessly. Plus when I go to disassemble it, it saves my cutters because aluminum wire is very easy to cut. But as you can see, I tried a couple of different things. For example, over here I have a seed bead, a size 60 seed bead, but over here I have a rhodonite bead. And that's because I was trying to decide the length of the dangles. Another thing that I try to decide is which way the beads are going to face. For example, on this side, the tulip bead is facing down and on that side it's facing up. And I do this with statement necklaces almost exclusively, guys. I always create a prototype because I need to figure out how to construct the necklace. And it involves many factors. What I do is I start with my focal bead, I place that in the middle, and then I play around with the surrounding beads. 
And let me tell you, that's a very involved process, which can take me up to two to four hours. Sometimes less, it just depends on the beads. There are times when I'll create a prototype and then I'll come back the next day and change it up. But anyway, this is one of the steps that I recommend that you do whenever you're building something that's complicated like this, because you want to make sure that the beads lay properly and that the dangles hang straight down and that it's functional. You don't want to spend hours creating something and then put it on and find out that it doesn't sit properly on your chest. That can be very frustrating. So anyway, let's go ahead and mount all of these on wire. And we're going to do simple loops on all of these, except for one of these rhodonite beads and four of these lily beads. The one rhodonite bead and the four lily beads will have wrap loops because they're going to be dangling down. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. Here's my 20 gauge piece of wire. I'm going to start by creating a little kink here. And I'm going to create it at about 3 eighths of an inch down, something like that. As you can see, it's not quite a 90 degree angle, but it's good enough. And now using round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the end, making sure that it's flush. And I'm simply going to loop it. Let me make sure it's closed. And you want to make sure that it's centered on the wire as well. Just like that. Let me go ahead and start with the speed. I'm going to slide it on like that. And now I'm going to grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, cut off the excess, leaving 3 eighths of an inch. Grab the end with my round nose pliers making sure it's flush because that's how you get a nice round loop. And I'm going to go ahead and loop it. And once again, you want to make sure you close your loop and that it's sitting straight on that wire. The other thing I like to do is to make sure my loops are facing the same direction. So this one's done. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're new to making simple loops, it may not be that easy for you. Basically, what you have to do, guys, is just to get used to your pliers. You have to figure out where on the barrels you want to be. And that's not easy when you're new, but it does get easier the more you do it. I've made videos about it. You can actually figure out on your own and then make yourself a template with a measurement that represents the length of your loops. But using a template can become tedious as well. Like I said, the best thing to do is just to get used to your pliers and just to practice. So anyway, that's how I'm going to do most of these. I'm just going to do simple loops. And now let me show you the ones with the wrap loops. Let me go ahead and pick up one of these little beads. I'm going to slide it onto my ball head pin like this. Using my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin right above the bead. Like this. Kink it. Switch to this part of the pliers, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm going to grab the loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use them for this purpose because they grab really well and the nose is really skinny as well. And now using these pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to create a couple of wraps. Using my flush cutters, I'm going to snip off the excess. And if you see a little tail, you should tuck it in. Because you don't want anything sharp sticking out. Let me go ahead and straighten this loop a little bit. That's good enough. So anyway, that's how I'm going to do the four lily beads because they're going to be dangling down and the other ones will have simple loops. Now, as you're doing these, you're going to want to place them side by side like this to make sure that all your loops are the same. You don't want different sized loops because you want the dangles to hang evenly. And then one of these will have a wrap loop as well. So to save time, let me go ahead and do the rest off camera and then we'll come back and assemble everything. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I've mounted all my beads on wire. So now comes the fun part. And I say that half joking because it's not exactly 100% fun. It can be a little challenging. 
But anyway, like I mentioned before, I already created a prototype, so I kind of know what I'm doing. And I basically started with this bead. And I knew I wanted some beads below it, either a swag or something, which is why I decided on these smaller beads. But anyway, after placing that one in the center, then what I did is I started arranging these green ones, one on either side like this. And then of course I had to decide what to put in between and that's where these came in. So let me go ahead and put one there and another one on this side and then another one over here. Let me just move these down and I'll place another rhodonite on this side like this. And I was kind of limited by the number of camellia beads. I only have five of them, so I had to use them wisely. So then I decided to put one on this side and another one on this side and then one below the focal bead. Let me just turn it this way. So the next thing I had to decide on was about whether I should have swags or not. But since I didn't have any small beads, I just had these six millimeter size beads. I decided to just have two little strands connecting to that camellia bead. Let me show you. So one there, and now one of these tulip beads, and another one of these rhodonite beads. Same thing on this side. Something like that. And I just realized that I forgot to put one of these rhodonite beads on a ball head pin. So let me go ahead and do that now. Here's the ball head pin. Let me go ahead and tuck in that little end. And I'm going to place this one right here. So that's the main structure. Let me go ahead and put a rhodonite bead over here. And another one on this side. And I actually have one extra one here. I'm only supposed to have two. So let me remove one. I'm going to use one over here to create a dangle with one of these tulip beads. And then on this side, I'm going to have a tulip bead and a seed bead above it. Let me just straighten it out a little bit. When I created my prototype, I realized that I wanted that dangle a little bit shorter, which is why I'm not using a rhodonite bead there. So let me do the same thing on this side now. So that's basically it guys. That's how I'm going to connect everything. And it may seem like it was easy, but it really wasn't. I had to try a couple of different things before I came up with this design. So now what I'm going to do is use jump rings to connect some of these components, mostly the ones on the top. So basically the loops on all of these components on the top are going to be vertical or perpendicular to my mat. Let me fix this one. Same thing with these. Once I connect the jump rings, they'll be vertical. It's just that I wanted to show you exactly what I meant by that. It's a little difficult to keep them like that, but I think you get the idea. The reason they need to be vertical is because the jump rings need to be horizontal or parallel to the mat so that the dangles hang properly. I'll explain that a little bit more in just a few moments once I start connecting everything. I've actually talked about it many times on my channel. So if you've been following my channel, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. I have a bunch of jump rings here. These are four millimeters in size. I'm probably not going to use all of them. So let me go ahead and open one up and we'll get started.
Let me go ahead and slide the focal into it and the adjacent beta component, the rhodonite, like that, and close it up. So if you'll look, the jump ring is sitting parallel to my mat and the loops on the beta components are vertical. That's how you want to connect everything. Let me go ahead and open up another jump ring. And I'm going to connect the other loop of this focal bead and another rhodonite bead. Another reason why I'm using jump rings is because it gives the piece a little bit more movement. And Boo Boo just jumped on my lap. It never fails. Whenever I do beading, the first thing he wants to do is to be with me. So you may hear some purring or some meowing, and sometimes he does get in the way. So you have to excuse me if you see some weird hand movements. So the next thing I'm going to connect are these two and this one here, this dangle, and also this one here. Let me just move these back in their places. So the next jump ring is going to have four components connected to it. So that'll be a little bit more challenging, but hopefully I'll be able to do it if Boo Boo will let me. He does kind of get in the way sometimes. Let me go ahead and open up a jump ring. And I'm going to slide this road night bead into it. And now this one. And now this one here, and this camellia bead. Let me grab that jump ring and close it up without dropping anything, hopefully. Okay, boo boo. All right, so let me show you what we've done. As you can see, I've connected four components to that one jump ring. Let me go ahead and connect these two together. And I need to connect these two to that one. So let me go ahead and open up this one, this loop. So that's what we have so far. And now I need to connect this tulip bead to that rhodonite bead. So I'm going to open up this loop and slide the tulip bead into it and close it up. I hope you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's really not that difficult. You just have to know how to connect everything. And by the way, you can connect things in whatever order you want. It doesn't have to be the way I'm doing it. So now I need to do the same thing on this side. Let me go ahead and open up a jump ring. And I'm going to slide a rhodonite bead into it. And now this camellia bead. And now I'm going to slide another rhodonite bead. Let me just grab the jump ring and pull it out a little bit. And now this one. Hopefully I can do it without dropping things. It is quite challenging. So 
So that's what we have so far. Let me go ahead and connect these two. This rhodonite bead and the tulip bead. And I want to make sure that I connect the tulip bead facing in the right direction or pointing in the right direction. Like this. Just like on this side. And now let me go ahead and open up this loop on this rhodonite bead. And slide the tulip bead into it. So far, everything's been connecting properly and rather easily, actually. And now I have to attach this tulip bead to the rhodonite bead. Let me open it up. Open up the loop, I should say. So now I need to connect these two strands to the camellia bead. And this one is going to be a little bit tricky because you want to make sure your strands aren't all twisted up. And I will be using a jump ring. So let me go ahead and open it up. If you'll notice, this beaded component has loops that are vertical. These loops are horizontal and these are vertical. So I need to connect it like this. And now this camellia bead. And now I need to check the loops on this side. We have vertical, horizontal, vertical. So it needs to go like this. Let me just make sure I'm connecting it properly. I think I am. If not, I can always open up this jump ring and redo it. Let's take a look. It looks like I have connected everything properly. And one way I can tell is because all the components seem to be laying properly and they're not all twisted up or fighting with each other. So let me go over this again. These jump rings are horizontal or parallel to the mat and all the loops that are connecting to it are vertical or perpendicular to the mat. Same thing with this one here. So now let me connect the next set of dangles, which are going to be a little bit shorter than these. I'm going to use the seed bead component. And I'm going to connect this tulip bead to one of the loops. Let me do the same thing on this side. And I did make the loops on these seed bead components a little bit smaller than my other loops. And the reason I did that is because, again, I don't want these dangles to be very long. So here are both of them. Let me just move these up. So my next jump ring is going to have three components connected to it, and it's going to go right there. Let me go ahead and open it up. I'm going to slide in this camellia bead. Let me just make sure that it's connected properly. And now this dangle. like this. And now the rhodonite bead. I'm trying not to drop things. You just need to take your time when you're doing this kind of thing.
So now that one's connected. And let me double check that my loops are okay. And it looks like they are. Let me do the same on this side now. So now this side is done and the rest is pretty easy. I need to connect this dangle to the bottom of that camellia bead. So let me go ahead and open up the loop. So the next component is going to be this one and then this one. I'm going to put a jump ring right there, but I'm not going to put one there. In fact, after I connect this one, I'm going to attach some strands that I made ahead of time. Here they are. These are the rest of the road night beads. And they're simple loops. So I did the same thing. I basically opened up a loop, slid in a beaded component, closed it, and then continued connecting the rest of them like that. So let me go ahead and open up another jump ring. Slide it into this loop. And now I'm going to slide the camellia bead into it as well and close it up. And now I'm going to open up this loop of the camellia bead and slide in this one. And now let me open up this loop. And slide in one of these strands doesn't that look nice i think it's really pretty let me do the same thing on this side now So now the only thing that's left is to attach the lobster clasp. But before I do, what I'm going to do now is to take this necklace to the mirror and hold it up to my chest and see if it's the right length or if I need to remove some components. And then when I come back, we'll measure it, attach the clasp and review all the steps. So I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I'm back and it's the right length. So I'm not going to remove any components. I'm going to measure it in just a few moments, but I wanted to go over a couple of things with you. Each of these strands consists of nine rhodonite beads and then there's a total of 11 rhodonite beads below. Now you can take a screenshot at this point if you want to, but I will be arranging my necklace again on my workspace in just a few moments. So that'll give you another opportunity. But anyway, then I have five camellia beads and six of these tulip beads. And these two have the size 60 seed beads. So now let's go ahead and measure it. I'm just going to measure one side. Let's take a look. It measures about eight and a half inches from the focal point to that last bead. Now the lobster clasp and the jump rings are going to add a little bit more to the length. Plus I'm going to be attaching an extended chain. So that'll give you plenty of options to adjust the length if you want to. Here it is. Here's my clasp. Here's the tulip bead. I'm going to attach it to the end of the extended chain. And I'm going to use a ball head pin to do that. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to do a wrap loop. So once again I'm grabbing the pin right at the top of the bead like this kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, let me open up this loop, slide in the chain, like this, grab the loop with my pliers, Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Let me tuck in that little end. And let me straighten out this loop. So there it is attached. Here are two jump rings. 
They're four millimeters in size, just like the other ones I used. Let me go ahead and open one up. And there's no front or back to this necklace, so it really doesn't matter what side you connect the lobster clasp to. Let me just go ahead and connect it to this strand. So there it is attached. And by the way, I had one rhodonite bead left from the strand that came in the box. So I could potentially swap this one out. Instead of having the tulip bead, I might swap it out and put the rhodonite bead there. But I'll decide that later on. Let me go ahead and open up this jump ring. Slide the strand into it. And now the extended chain. like this and close it up. So now that's connected. I think it looks really nice. So that's my finished statement necklace and I really love it. I love the colors. I think the pink and the green really looks good together. I hope you like it as well and I hope I've given you some ideas. You could always make it without attaching these dangles for something a little bit simpler. But anyway guys as always I'd like to go ahead and put it on for you and show you what it looks like. So I'll see you in a few moments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.